So this is actually a sad day here in Huntington Beach. Now, don't get me wrong, it's another beautiful day. We're enjoying the sunset here on the pier, but this is the first time I've shooby dooby down to Ruby's since it's been closed. I was surprised to learn that on Friday, February 26, the Ruby's here on the pier closed. And when that news broke, I was surprised how many of you were talking about it at our church. Clearly, a lot of us had good memories walking down the pier and having a meal here with our friends or our family, even some of our church family I've been here with before. Krista just told me, we've still got gift cards here to Ruby's that will now never be used. And I have great memories walking down here, getting shakes with my son, Jack. And so it is sad when you can no longer shooby dooby down to Ruby's. And that actually goes perfectly with today's chapters, Hosea 6 and 7, because the Hebrew word shub, or you might pronounce it shuv, is used four times in these two chapters. And this Hebrew word means to turn. It's the idea, really, of repentance. I've used this in sermons before, shooby dooby, like the idea of a repentance, a turning to God. And here in Hosea 6 and 7, there is talk about the people of Israel repenting, but it doesn't really happen. It's a fake revival. And I want you, yes, even here on the pier with the sun setting and closed rubies behind me, I want you to open your Bible to Hosea chapter six because Hosea chapter six verses one to three describe like this, this fake revival, this like what if we turned around idea that doesn't really end up happening. In Hosea 6, 1, it says, Come, let us return, or let us shuv to the Lord, for he has torn us that he may heal us. He has struck us down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. So there's this idea, if we shuvy dooby, if we shuv to the Lord, see, then on the second day, he'll revive us. On the third day, he'll raise us up. And so this idea is like, what if we shuv? Now, I've heard a lot of people say they want to repent and get their life right with God. But I've seen this, what I call the 90 degree turn. You know, a real turnaround would be 180 degrees. You're going one way and you turn and go the opposite direction. Well, a lot of people, they're like, oh, I want to turn, but they don't really follow through. Instead of a whole turn around, it's just kind of this half turn, this 90 degree turn. That's exactly what's expressed here. It seems like there's an intention. Maybe it's Hosea the prophet saying it to the people like they should, or maybe it's the people thinking, yeah, it would be better if we did. But it's clear from verse four that the, the turn doesn't really happen. God says, what shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud like the dew that goes early away. Like, like the dew that's on the ground just there for a minute and then the sun comes out and it's gone. That's what your love is like. That's what your turnaround is like. This is the fake revival. And so it, it sounds so promising at the beginning, the idea of turning to the Lord. In two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up. It's actually a really interesting Easter time reference to the third day. Here's a challenge for everybody watching this video. Look up other times in the law, prophets, and writings. It mentions the third day. This is before the third day is made famous, when Jesus rises from the dead. And we're getting ready for Easter. We're gonna talk about the death and resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ, the hill worth dying on. I got to give out uh, one of these to my neighbor who's hopefully coming on Easter. I told him about all three of our Easter resurrection Sunday morning services, the sunrise service at seven and then nine and 11. My neighbor, he was thinking 11 sounded good, but we're out spreading the word about Easter. So look up these third day. It's really interesting. On the third day, he will raise us up. Did it really just say that? Is that some kind of prophecy? Is that some kind of like predictive reference to the third day? It'll boggle your mind if you do a little digging right now into how many times third day is in the law, prophets, and writings. Leave a comment 
and let us know your third day discoveries. But, but I want you to hear right now from God because God's already said there's no steadfast love or faithfulness. There's no knowledge of me in the land. That's the big problem. Uh, that's what he said in, in chapter four and five that we looked at before. Well, now look, God says, what shall I do with you? Your love is like the dew. It's like the morning cloud. It's there for a minute and then gone. You act like you want to repent, but you don't really do it. And, and so he says in Hosea 6, 6, for I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. See, he, God wants us to love him with our heart. God wants us to know him in a relationship. He doesn't want the sacrifices, the offerings, the going through the motions, the I'll just sin and then I'll say I'm sorry. See, this is the, the way to say that idea like, oh, I'll just sin and then confess it and God will forgive me and it'll all be good. No, God doesn't want a relationship like that. He doesn't want your fake repentance. He doesn't want the false revival. God wants you to turn to him with all of your heart. He wants your love and he wants you to really know him. So God actually said that he would shuv at the end of chapter five in verse 15. And I saw a lot of you leaving comments about this verse. I will return again to my place. This is God speaking until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face and in their distress, earnestly seek me. I mean, there's God saying, I'm going to turn. I'm going to stay right here and I'm waiting for you to seek after me. I'm waiting until you really want it, till you have a passion to repent even halfway through uh, our passage today in Hosea 6 and 7, in chapter 6, verse 11, God says, For you also, O Judah, a harvest is appointed when I restore the fortunes of my people. Like, I'm ready to turn my people around. God is the one who grants repentance. And he wants to turn his people back towards him. But their works are so evil, it says. It's like they don't even consider how, how evil they are and he remembers their evil so he can't turn them around because they're acting in such an evil way against him. So here's God saying that he's waiting for people to seek him. Here's God saying he wants to turn them around but they're still so committed to their evil. See, that's the false revival. That's the 90 degree turn. Oh, I would really like to be right with God but I don't really want to leave behind my sin. And here's God saying, I wish you would turn all the way to me. I wish you would seek me. You would find me. I wish I could grant you that repentance and turn you around, but they have to be willing to leave behind the evil. And two times as we get into Hosea 7, it describes their repentance as not really being genuine. They didn't really shooby dooby all the way around. Rubies is now closed for God's people. It says in chapter seven, verse 10, the pride of Israel testifies to his face, yet they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Oh, look what's happening to them. Look at their pride, and yet still they won't turn to the Lord. And then at the very end of the chapter, chapter seven, verse 16, they return, but not upward. It's not a real repentance. They are like a treacherous bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword because of the insolence of their tongue. Oh, they, they kind of do some sort of turnaround, but it's not the real thing. It, it's, like, it's like you pull back your bow and you can't even trust if it's really gonna shoot the arrow straight. That's what's going on with Israel, a 90 degree fake revival. And so this is why it's so important that this Easter season, we spread the good news of Jesus Christ and we call people to repent so that they can be forgiven of their sin in the name of Jesus because just like Israel here in Hosea 6 and 7, a fake turn, a half turn right now, time is running out on the opportunity to repent. You don't want to end up having the gift card still in your hand when the opportunity is closed for repentance. So let's make the most of this opportunity. As we approach uh, Palm Sunday, this Sunday, and then Good Friday and Easter, now is the time for us to have Jesus' Passion Week on our hearts, to remember his death and resurrection, and then to be ready to spread that it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance 
take God up on his offer to be forgiven before the, the door is closed. And so today's a great day to take one last shooby dooby down to Ruby's and make sure that we remember everybody needs to repent before it's too late. Beware the fake revival of Israel and make sure that we've all done a 180 degree turn to leave our sin behind and seek the Lord with all our heart. So it is a sad day here in Huntington Beach and it's a sad day for all who don't repent and find the Lord. So I hope your heart is stirred up to pray for who God's gonna save this Easter 2021. And we'll see you for more here on Scripture of the Day. Mm -hmm.